I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have loved his appearing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On this St. Luke's Day, we have an interesting gospel. It's the one where Christ sends out the 72 to all those who would hear the word of the Lord, but also to those who would not hear the word of the Lord. Peace be to this house. And where there were the people of peace, the peace of the Lord would rest there. But if they were not people of peace, the peace of the Lord would return back to the disciples and the apostles. What's really interesting is Christ gives this declaration to the apostles and to the disciples before he himself says it. He sends out his pastors to say to them, peace be to this house. But soon Christ would be crucified. He would be raised from the dead. He would descend into hell and all of the apostles would be afraid and would be locked into a room for fear of the Jews. And then yet Christ would come and what would he say? Peace be with you. So even before Christ said it to his disciples, he sent his disciples out to say it to others. The gospel on four feet. Our Lord giving the peace that only he can give. And yet there are people of peace and there are people not of peace. And we must be able to differentiate between the two. You've heard me say before that C.S. Lewis once wrote that he did not join Christianity in order to be happy because he believed that a bottle of port would be able to do that much better than being a Christian. In other words, Christianity is hard. Christianity is not easy. Being people of peace is more difficult than being people of war. Being forked-tongued is much easier than have honey drip from our, from our mouths. Here it is. If you desire to be a Christian, be prepared for these things. Suffering. Fighting the good fight, running the race, and keeping the faith. These things are not easy, and yet we're called to do it. In particular, we see that pastors are often attacked much more harshly and much more with much more dedication than most anyone else. Why? Because if where the pastor goes, so goes the congregation. And so the pastor must be in prayer and he must ask his he must ask the flock of Christ to pray for him as well. Because the devil comes for the pastors first. I pray that as Christ has sent me out that we are all people of peace. So that during the words of institution, right after the words of institution, and you hear the words, the peace of the Lord be with you always, that's literally what's happening. What's happening in the divine service is what has happened when He sent out the, the 72, and it's what happens in heaven. What we are doing now is what happens in heaven. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 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 Not just in this life, but in the next. Always. And so we are people of peace. But being people of peace is not an easy task. We must be sober-minded. And then 
we must do the work of the evangelist and fulfill our ministry. But I left one out. And this is the one that is the most difficult. Endure suffering. That's what C.S. Lewis was talking about. Being a Christian is not easy. Enduring suffering is not easy. We would much prefer that we would not have to endure suffering. We would, we would much prefer that the ministry of Jesus Christ would be a simple thing for others to grasp. And yet, we live in a world that simply hates it. Hates the message. The, the message that the Gospel is free. The message that our Lord Jesus Christ died for you, rose for you, ascended for you, and will call upon your name in your time of dying. The world doesn't like that message because the Gospel is divisive. There are people of peace and there are people not of peace. And yet, as we endure suffering in this world, we have to make, I want to make sure that I'm very clear on enduring suffering. Enduring suffering can look in many different ways and approach us in many more ways. Suffering is never ending in this life. And I cannot, I wish that I had an easier message to give to you, but I don't. And if I didn't give you this message, I wouldn't be doing my job as a shepherd. Suffering will come and it will come in devastating forms. Forms that bring us to our knees. Forms that bring tears to our eyes. Forms that make the devil smile. Forms of suffering so deep that our hearts are rent in two and it's as if they will never be put back together. True suffering. Not just simply a throwaway line. Suffering. But Christ says to us, pick up your cross and follow me. You will endure the suffering of the cross. But, hear this. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. In the midst of that suffering, that horrible, heart-renting suffering, keep putting one foot in front of the other. Pray to the Holy Spirit that He would guide your feet one in front of of the other. One minute after one minute, one hour after one hour, one day after one day. And soon our eyes will close in death. But that death is not bittersweet. It's only sweet. Because it's in death that we open our eyes to see Jesus face to face, one on one. So keep it going, one foot in front of the other. Fight the good fight. When suffering comes, say, have at it. Bring it on. Because I have a Lord who not only has suffered on the cross, but who will endure on my behalf. I have a Savior who, if you take my head, will give me a new one. Come the resurrection of the dead. One foot in front of the other. Finish the race. Keep the faith. Because there's one word in our epistle text that cannot be overlooked. And it's this. Henceforth. From this point onward. From here until then, 
there is laid up for you a crown of righteousness. From this point on, Christ has polished your crown and it is on His back that the crown is fastened. It is by the righteousness of Jesus Christ that the crown is placed upon our head. It, for it is Christ, the righteous judge, who awards to us on that day all that He has given us to lay down in this life. Keep the faith. Run the race. Wear the crown. Because when this life is over, we shall see Jesus. When this life is over, we shall know what it means to be a prince of the Prince of Peace. We will know what it's like to, and we will understand what true righteousness is. For Christ has laid it up on our behalf. So, that, so that as soon as we enter into heaven, that diadem is placed upon our head and Christ says, well done, good and faithful servant. Take up your mat. You, your faith has made you well. You have ran the race. You have kept the faith. Henceforth, my dear child, heaven is for you. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Amen.